welcome to another episode of Not Too Deep. It's a very exciting episode. I'm your host, Grace Helbig. We are officially, formally launching our monthly Mitchell episode. He is back with us. He lives in the floor, but we're bringing him up for air once a month from here until he bails on me. We have a Grayson Mitchell, I guess, ranty kind of episode. We talk about things that we don't like. He explains to me what being an emo kid actually entails and turns out it's a very luxurious, difficult, high maintenance lifestyle. Enjoy this episode of Not Too Deep with the one, the only, Mitchell Davis. <laughs> gotten a public massage for sure yes. really yes <laughs> I, I, that's one thing i can't bring myself to do oh. tyler oakley always goes to those express spas in the airport oh i that's, can't do it those are my sheesh really yes see i feel like a full-on performance artist narcissist if I go there. <laughs> in the airport they, oh in the airport maybe you're the best massages i've ever had really yeah because they just don't give a shit no true and also it's the most vulnerable i've ever seen someone in public just face down <laughs> at the mercy in of the middle of a fucking hall <laughs> Hallway with yeah. people who are all stressed yeah. out, and you're like, "Look at me! Oh yeah, that feels good." Yeah, and uh, I mean, I mean, I'll just be like, "Yeah, my bags are heavy. Get in there, bro. Get in there, bro." He's uh-huh. like, "You don't even have luggage, dude." Sometimes I'll just go to the airport for a massage. <laughs> I'll just suck it up through TSA just to get these quads in order. Can I just get one of those fifty nine ninety nine Vegas passes <laughs> just for a good masseuse? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hi, Mitchell Davis. Hello, hello. Welcome. Hi, uh, welcome. This, I mean, Mitchell, this is your... 150th time. 157th time on the podcast. Yeah, yeah. I, f- I did forget those six. Uh, <laughs> we all wanted to forget them. Yeah, Don't there worry. were a few that we were like, yeah, we got to get this guy out of here. The We are now... Officially, formally, committing to a monthly episode in which you are oh, my co-host every that's month. So that's that's. I mean, we've been we've been flirting with that idea for a long time, I and know. I think we're actually gonna jump in, dive in, oh, commit you, to the relationship. When you put it out like that, it makes me nervous. I'm sweating. <laughs> I'm sweating in places I wasn't sure. Like all of a sudden, the show's totally different. I'm like, uh, maybe my arms don't work. On the ad breaks, we'll get you a massage. Don't okay, worry. Great. <laughs> <laughs> it comes back and I'm just like, Grace, okay, here we uh, go. Um, I did tweet out yesterday for questions. Oh, I, I trust me. Yeah, I got a lot of, I was in that. You yeah. Got, I, you put me in that tweet and I got every single buzz. Oh, you got every little little notification? Every notification. We- Some were so bizarre. <laughs> I, I literally turned to my friend, Emily, I was just like, is this, do you think this is what Grace's Twitter is like? All the time? (laughs) I think because I've started, I realized that when I ask for questions for people on the podcast, there's a lot of repetitive questions or a lot of just like the same type of like, what got you started on YouTube? What's the, what's your biggest regret? Any advice for someone going to college? Like stuff like that, that we've answered a billion times. Mm -hmm. And so when I start being more direct and say, send me your dumbest, most invasive questions, people really take it upon themselves. Yeah, they do. They really, really do. They do. Uh, I mean, and they, they also just make a lot of callbacks that I'm just, I was just scrolling through my feed and I was just having just tr- just triggers all over the place <laughs> of our past idiocracies. Yeah, uh, I also, we've done so much, we've made and created so much content together Yeah, like, that when I see someone referencing something specific, I have no memory of it. There are a few that, <laughs> even the picture you post, I was like, when did we take this? Oh my God, I literally just Google image searched Grace Helbig Mitchell Davis. <laughs> And that came up, and I literally, same thing. I was like, when was this? Yeah, I was like, I look like Chris Kindle. She has the same color hair as me. I don't know what the fuck's going on. We look like twins. Yeah, no, like, it's the one picture you could have posted where people are like, maybe they've been related this whole time. We don't know. Maybe they've been the same person this whole time, and we've been bamboozled by them. Yeah, it was a, I literally, like, looked at the picture twice. I was like, I don't fucking remember this. Yeah, we look um, like we're doing hard drugs in that photo. Yeah, we. Or like we are like, like our <laughs> eyes look so dilated yeah. and our facial facial expressions are so stoic. If you guys haven't seen it, go back through my Twitter and find it. It's yeah. um yeah, it, surprisingly, it's like the first photo that comes up when I googled our Great. names. I'm glad that that's a part of <laughs> our this completely random, forgettable photo that looks like Children of the Corn found an iPhone for the first yeah, time. That is it. Yes, it looks like we're looking at a camera for the first time. It's like an 1800s picture. <laughs> it looks like two. Cavemen just got defrosted. <laughs> like, yeah. What is this thing? <laughs> <laughs> 
phone? <laughs> like, I yeah. love it. It's um, a really good, I'm going to frame it, put it in my house. It's pretty good. It makes me want to go back and deep dive and look through, because that's before people really kind of um, curated their selfies a little no, bit No, it better. definitely was. We just didn't give a shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like Everybody first... else's selfies looked really good. We were still yeah. just posting that. My life is Ava's out there just killing it on a beach, and we're just like in a dark room. <laughs> we're like, we found a four phone. <laughs> We oh found yeah, this rectangle with light. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also asked for people to give us suggestions on maybe what we should call these episodes, yeah. since they're going to be a little bit more niche and a little bit more formatted-ish. In that the only format is that you're here. Regularly. I was kind of <laughs> hoping that you were going to say formal, and I was like, "Cool, we're going to wear suits. We're going to wear two tuxedos Ooh. every time, <laughs> and top hats. Yeah. We'll eventually get there. Cool, cool. Um, but Good. I did like Alan Sheard responded that he thinks that we should at least have a segment called Save Us Davis. Save Us Davis. Oh, I, wow. That's great. Where Mitchell actually. gives tips on how to be a decent human being. Every episode of the segment is introduced, but the only thing he ever says is, quote, just be nice to people and don't be a dick. And then the segment is over. That so is, not only did Alan give us the suggestion, he has written out the entire segment. <laughs> that's awesome. He did all the work for us, yeah. though. That's so great. Is Alan, you said, you got a way. Alan Sheard. Dude, you got a, that's not how you, you're giving away good ideas. Yeah. Yeah, and I we'll just take it. I just want to put out there though, because it was on my mind. Mm-hmm. I just everybody should just be. What was it again? Just be nice to people and don't be a yeah, dick. That's what I was thinking. Just organically is just be nice to people and don't be a dick. <laughs> I couldn't even give the line good yeah. once. You know, there's time to work on it. I'll be here every month. Yeah, I'll try it next month. <laughs> I like that. Uh, follow Joss just said, "How is this different?" <laughs> I ask myself that every day when I wake up. I look in the mirror and I go, how is this different? <laughs> that's your morning mantra. Yeah, a, lot of people, a lot of people have like motivational things. That's my, how is this going to be different? And just then I just smash through a wall like Kool-Aid man. <laughs> yeah, you are not getting your down payment back on your apartment. Yeah, well, no, yeah, it's crazy. Um, the, they also said, I kid, I suggest you call them Remembrances of YouTube Past, How I Decided on This Haircut. Oh. That, I mean, drag us, follow yeah. us. Jesus. To be fair, though, I mean, I feel like we're at our hair peaks right now. I think, yeah, I think we have come into our own hair wise. I know I am. Yeah, you have definitely, I mean, from the photo that I posted <laughs> to right now, really had a glow up, as the kids say. J- just it, And just hair alone. Yeah. You know, not the rest of me. No. The rest of me is still exactly <laughs> that same photo. But the hair itself, yeah, I don't know what happened. I just got struck by lightning. The Yeah, and whereas... I last time was just wearing a helmet of hair, <laughs> like a full beetle. <laughs> to be fair, though, you cha- you do change your hair quite a bit. You've you've gone through a I lot do. of looks. I think you looks uh, in the loosest sense. Yeah, um, yeah I've gone through uh, some emotional turmoil. I think yeah. is more appropriate for how the looks have happened. Hey, Scott Pilgrim, we all have to Scott Pilgrim <laughs> sometimes and just cut our hair or let it grow and just throw on that beanie oh, you know 100 percent. what are you watching right now what am i watching i'm looking yeah. at you i okay. mean we're, well that's we're, creepy okay <laughs> um, watching um i just i just started watching anime for the first time and i'm for not, the first time ever 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 you yeah. never see i would peg you as an anime boy okay first off i'm grace i don't feel comfortable you saying you'd peg me uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm um, officially uh, retracted <laughs> uh but yeah uh, yeah i a lot of people always assume that i would uh, be really into it and stuff i mean the closest i had ever come was like venture brothers or anything like right, that right right but uh i yeah i just started recently which watching one, some stuff yeah which one got broke the seal uh is this it's like this scary one i don't know the name exactly so uh, uh-huh. yeah go check it out uh, the scary one but it, no it's Google? scary there's a, there's a story about uh like a girl who basically turns into a slug and it's so what? it's so specific that i know that you if you google that you're gonna find it is it it's supposed insane. to be like a metaphor in any way i don't know they're just terrifying <laughs> like there was an episode where a dude was just like uh like he was like uh, it's part of our tradition. In our fa- I'm spoiling this episode. It's part sure. of our tradition of our family is uh, to pass down the memories of our loved ones. And then you find out that they're just like attaching each other's like old head, piece of head what? to like their uh, their existing head. And it looks like a giant caterpillar. What? Like it's very terrifying graphics okay. and shit. And uh, 
Yeah, I like it. I've also been watching this thing called like Hunter Hunter or something. I don't know. What's just, that? I, it's like this kid who's just like he wants to be like a hunt, just like a, the ultimate a hunter in this world. And is like, it a reality show? No, this is another anime. Oh, okay. I'm t- I'm talking <laughs> anime still. My okay, hair's still okay. spiked up. Okay. okay. <laughs> I don't even know if that's all happens, but uh, I'm serious. You guys, guys, it's all the hair is like real high and I love it. But uh, how did you decide that you were going to get into anime? I watched a YouTube video where someone was telling me anime is one of the few formats where they can get away with more expression in the face. And I was I was interested in seeing it happen in things because they were saying like. You can mute it and like their pupils will shake when they're like worried or they're thinking and also they're like they're more expressive and everybody you can kind of hear their thoughts and the the storytelling is just different in anime and I was just interested to see it and I think I'm hooked. You're in it. I think I'm hooked. You're into it. I'm in it. Uh, Is Dragon Ball Z anime? I think so. Okay. I mean, again, I'm new, so you right. know everything I just said. There's probably like a lot of people listening, just cringing screaming. their teeth. Yeah, they're like screaming at their Alexa. Everything he's is wrong, and, and like, I get that because I, you know, I, that was like my whole high school career. Yeah, everything he's saying is wrong. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Welcome to this new world. What are, What are you watching? Oh, I'm. Uh, I watched The Bachelor this week. I'm caught up. Okay. It's been a slow season. Yeah. I, no it, offense. It's sucked hard. I'm not going to lie. I know it's been a slow season. I don't watch it because I don't hear about it on Twitter. Right. Well, this past episode, this will come out, you know, a month or so after this most recent episode. Uh, finally, was interesting. He basically... Is he a virgin this one? He Oh, you know, if you watch right? 10 seconds of one episode, you'll find out pretty quickly 20 times that he's a virgin. I just want to let you guys know as the first virgin, I'm a virgin, 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 virgin. I'm a, Can I yeah. get a virgin, Mark's Heider, Mark Virgin? I am going to need some aversion therapy after this. Yeah. Because it's not a good season. And they harp so hardly on the fact that he is a virgin that it's like. Never done sex. Yeah. And you almost feel like. Maybe. You feel a little like creeped out that these girls have to be like I'm gonna maybe be the one that takes his publicly like thing away from him oh poppy cherry boy yeah it's so weird but then he basically just lost his actual mind this most recent episode Aww. he's down to three girls and he told one that he wants her and she's like I'm actually kind of out oh, like you whoa, met my dad I, I talked to my dad he knows that I have hesitation so I don't think I can be here and so he like broke the fuck down yeah that's that's what you do and then he jumped a fence and ran into the woods and Chris Harrison doesn't know where he is right now Wow. I know. Good TV. That it actually is, sounds but it, really it fun. it took so many episodes to get to this. Yeah. It's the fence jump we've all been waiting for. And they've been teasing it since the first trailer. Okay. Okay. I have some shows that aren't anime that I'm not going to butcher. You ready? Yep. Pin 15. Oh, that's the one I have to watch. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. And I said that Incrustables. right. Incrustable. <laughs> it's incredible. It's so good. Uh-huh. So, so good. And I love that the two main characters are actually adults. It's, really? Yeah. I don't see. I only know that it's about middle school. I love it. I loved the Umbrella Brigade. I thought that don't was know what awesome. That is. That's a Gerard Way's like graphic novel okay. turned to life on Netflix. Cool. Cool. It was very cool. I truly say the music was the best part. The oh. soundtrack is just so good. Cool. I have to check it out. Yeah. Um. Someone wants us to rant about Aquaman. Did you see Aquaman? Uh, no, but let's let's actually rant about this. Yeah. Uh, just I've I don't already even... ranted on Mamrie Night's podcast about this, but I got plenty oh, in the. You know what? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, I don't you want to cross did... streams here, but <laughs> <laughs> I got a lot to say about Aquaman. First of all, Toilets. like this season of The Bachelor, sucks a dick. <laughs> 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 it uh... makes no sense. I mean, he is fantastic. So you saw it? I paid money at a movie theater to oh, see it. That's I went bad. to an iPick. Treated myself. Oh, wow. Chester and I went, and one had the weirdest experience of all time with the bartender. We went early and went to the bar before we went into the movie theater that's cool. also a bar. Yeah. Um, and we went and ordered drinks and like an appetizer from the bartender. A completely empty bar. Maybe two other people there. Mm-hmm. Not busy. Real shining side. The guy asked us to repeat our order immediately, and we did. And then he went to the his like kiosk thing, and he rang it up. And then he just went over and poured himself a cup of coffee and was just sipping coffee like 10 feet to our left. And we were like, was this uh, a performance? I thought we were being pranked. I was like, are we in the hidden camera show right now? What's going on? And then like literally three minutes passed because we're like, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe this is how he makes drinks. And <laughs> finally came over and he's like, your apps are going to be out soon. And we're like, what a 
about the rum and coke and the vodka soda? And he goes, oh, shoot. Yeah, okay. I think some... this might have been Bill Murray. It literally was the most confusing bartending experience I've had in a very long time. I was just like, I know that I'm not, a, I wasn't a good server when I was, you know, waiting tables, but this is exceptionally bad. I like, mean, we gave you two of the easiest drinks to make. I mean, it, and what's even crazier is just like, I give complicated drinks sometimes in bars that it's just like, <laughs> like that's all you hear. You know what I mean? It's not even music, it's just bass. Uh -huh. And I'm still just like, <laughs> and he's like, got it, got it. Do you mm -hmm. want to start a tap? I know, but like, right then. What confusing dick energy for someone I'm, to take your drink order, have you repeat it, yeah. and then just walk very slowly over and pour themselves a cup, cup of coffee and drink it right in front of yeah, you. Yeah, I feel like that's... But so that was how... That's my, awesome. That was my appetizer to going to see Aquaman. Cool. So you were already like pretty jazzed. I was already in a silly state. Yeah. And um, it was terrible. I just and we couldn't help but laugh the whole time. And then when you get into that, when you realize like this movie's gonna suck the whole time, but all I can do is laugh at it. That so it was like an hour and a half of just going, How did this happen? I mean, okay, so it's all underwater, a lot of it. M yeah, until the time when they have to save themselves and they get on a boat somehow, and the boat gets in an accident and then they're fucked. But they're creatures that survive underwater. I don't understand why the boat is the thing that they need to survive. Yeah, if anything, they should that the boat would if the boat fell apart, they'd be like, "Oh no, we're falling back they're, to where we come from." Essentially, they are two human boats. Mm. I don't know why they needed an actual tangible boat. <laughs> yeah, that sounds weird. Yeah, it also turns into like Mamma Mia for a second because they go to Italy and it's like she's Aqua Girl girl that's a love interest has like never been on land before, even though she has, Ooh, and so she turns into mermaid. like this aerial situation where she's like going around the fountains and like eating a flower because she doesn't know how human food works and it's so infuriating and he's a superhero and he eats the flower too to make her not feel weird oh, and, and he's a superhero they both get the shits I bet <laughs> have you ever eaten a flower I, I, well that's just my personal experience <laughs> I ate a flower once and I got the shits what are we talking about yeah Aquaman I just what's, um, what's a movie you've seen lately that bothered you that bothered me yeah I was just like Oh, oh. Or it was a lackluster or slightly a disappointment. Oh, let me get my phone really quick. Yeah, because I, I never go see movies ever. We all know this. But then to go and see this movie was like, I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. And it really fucking. Ooh, I'm, I'm all actually over the place. kind of excited about thinking about what's the last movie that I was like, this is Garbo. <laughs> Uh, because that shit happens all the damn time to uh -huh. me. Ooh, you know what really kind of, I was like, what's going on? Yeah. Is that I was really hoping it would be awesome is that Bohemian Rhapsody movie. Ooh, I heard, I haven't seen it, but I've heard my mom <laughs> loved it. And I was like, mom, all I've heard is negative stuff about I it. I mean, like, I get it. I get it. But the whole time, it just felt like it was like a, that moments like they just had like text on the screen that was like flying across and they had like a lot of montage moments and stuff uh, and I was just like it feels like somebody made this an iMovie in these parts <laughs> like all the money went into this one character and then they're like well we've got the rest of the movie to make now oh no and it's like a lot of montage shit and that's why when it won editing I was like well, it that, won editing so, right it won like editing or something and what? I was just like what that's the what's that's the one thing that I walked away being like what did I just like what? And the fact is, I hardly ever notice editing in a movie, oh. but to notice it in a negative way and then have it win for that. And I and I look, I'm in no way like a professional editor, but I edit a, quite a sure, few stuff. I was going to say this opens the door for you next year. Oh, Oscars oh. 2020. But yeah, I was just like, there's just some few, the moments where I was just like, that's the best we came up with. <laughs> I was like, dude, this is the, this is the intro to some kids like queen thing. And I'm like. That fucking sucks. Wow. But I will say the, the whole Live Aid performance at the end was pretty great. I heard that's really cool, but it also just feels a little, like, odd. Uh, they, they really played with Because it's, time. like, shot for shot, right? Yeah it, yeah, it is. There's, like, some YouTube videos of them side by side, and you're just like, he studied, like... He really... Yeah, he studied that character, and yeah. he, he was, like... I can't imagine the like the choreography of the no choreography like yeah. to make it look like he's just coming up with these moves all over again. Totally. Well, that's uh, after that movie came out and I heard negative things. I showed Elliot Live Aid uh, on YouTube like the whole twenty minute performance because mm -hmm. he had never seen it before, and I just got so fucking jazzed about it's it. It's it's an amazing performance. Ugh. I mean, 
like just that alone and that's why like i was like they have to it's got to be in the movie it's just yeah. gotta be in the movie it's too but- iconic and can you imagine i mean just looking at the crowd and how many thousands and thousands and thousands of people that are there and knowing that they're all paying attention to you is the most insane thing to my think whole about. body clenched thinking about yeah, it. yeah my whole body turned into a puckered butthole right yeah, now seriously, I'm, mm, 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 i just i can't even talk about it yeah i'm really nervous like i'm genuinely nervous and that happened you so like like the year i was born maybe i don't know yeah something like that yeah <sighs> well on you know on the visual imagery of a puckered butthole we're gonna take a quick break Ooh. and when we get back we're gonna answer some questions submitted from the social media platform that some might call the puckered butthole of the internet at Twitter. <laughs> we'll be right back with our Mitchell Davis on Not Too Deep. Not Too Deep. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by Hum Nutrition. Hum Nutrition is all about making you look and feel your best. Each specific supplement packs a combo of potent ingredients designed for specific aims like clearer skin, boosted energy, or fuller hair, and is backed by clinical results. Hum focuses on preventing concerns and long-term care and repair, not damage control and covering up. Their, quote, inside-out approach to beauty goes beyond a skincare regimen alone to give you great results. Hum's products are sustainably sourced, non-GMO, and free of soy, gluten, artificial colors, and preservatives, plus lots of vegan options, something for everyone. Try supplements like the Daily Cleanse, Hair Sweet, Hair Growth Gummies, Uber Energy, and more. If you aren't sure what you need, go to humnutrition.com slash get underscore started to take a quiz and get personalized recommendations from Hum's team of registered dietitians. To make things even easier, Hum offers a monthly vitamin subscription that's affordable, flexible, and convenient. These guys are are great every time i go into a grocery store or any sort of like supplement sort of mecca i'm overwhelmed with possibilities so the idea of taking their quiz and getting specific directional um treatments things that you need for you without wasting your time and taking a bunch of maybe placebos is Perfect. Go to humnutrition.com slash get underscore started for your personalized recommendations and get 20% off your purchase with code GRACE. That's humnutrition.com slash get underscore started and code GRACE. She might say that this is a lie, but I'm, I verbatim remember this happening. Okay. And she was like, Mitchell, you know, it's so I was like, how does DVDs work? How are they not like VHSs? And she goes, well... The thing is, is they're, they're a movie on a disc, and mm. it's like burned in there, and the trick, so that you can't steal it, Mitchell, uh. is they only play once. And I She remember, told you that? Yes, and I remember going, I remember going, what? Do you, what do you mean? And she's like, when you rent them, you can only play them once or twice. And then they and then the And then the movie's gone. And then they bring it she- back and they it's like they load it with another movie. And I, I, I <laughs> even as a kid, I was like, I think this is wrong. Did she genuinely believe that or no? She was actually straight up lying to you. This is the thing I still don't know. <laughs> but we were in a Hollywood video when it happened. Uh-huh. And for that, that whole I was I think it was like a 48 hour thing until I ran into my friend and described uh-huh. it. He was like, you're wrong. That that's like saying all video like what? No, you're dude. <laughs> no, and I, as soon as you brought up video games, I was like, you're so right. We've yeah. been using discs forever. But um, <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. If she's fucking with me, but it was it See, got me good. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you still think about it. Yeah, I know it's not real, but every once in a while, I'm like, this DVD could give. You <laughs> never know. <laughs> That's the craziest thing about like parents, grandparents, any sort of adult that has influence over a child is that you can truly tell a child anything. Yeah, at that age, she could have been like, "Hey, we don't do, we don't say Z anymore," and I've been like, "Why? She just don't say it." B, like, the letter B is a bad word. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I guess that's oh, shit. Uh. That's uh, yeah, I've said this before that. Funniest thing, Chester told me one time that his mom, when he was younger, told him, don't jump on the bed because there might be scissors in the bed. That's terrifying. And he, to this day, still has hesitation in jumping like on a hotel bed or anything because he thinks and is he's been trained that there might be rogue scissors in the bed. Okay, that's fucking <laughs> awesome. But that's like, that's the only kind of um, redeemable quality to me about being a parent is that you get to fuck with your kids like that. I was just at like a little house party and somebody brought one of their kids 
kids. Uh-huh. And it wasn't like crazy. We were all just hanging out watching movies. But yeah. this kid uh, started to run into the laundry room. Uh-huh. And the dad instantly goes, don't go in there. Monsters live in there. <laughs> and and uh, I turned to him and I was like, you know, 20, 20 years from now, this is why your daughter never does laundry. <laughs> <laughs> it's traumatized by laundry machines. That's, I mean, but also you can teach a child so many things by just dangling the idea of a monster like I, in front of them. I just love how it, can't, it was like instinctive out of his He's like, sorry, I just say monsters or whatever. Yeah, I don't want that baby to go. I had a friend <laughs> tell me that his mom was a little off when he was growing up and she told them that they can't put their hands into cereal boxes because there might be it's knives just, in there. Uh, so that's I was like, going to say because it's gross. Uh, well, that's, yeah, she was like, she didn't want them eating like cereal with their hands. So she told them that there's knives in the box of the box so and then that scary. they couldn't go hang out at the lake in their town because there was a witch that lived in the bottom of the what lake the <laughs> and he never ate cereal with his hands nor did he play at the lake okay <laughs> we need a children's book written by this person I know, it's like actual like maybe child abuse but i don't this is know like the millennial hansel and gretel oh, okay so this is scary it's so so nuts the um, witch at the bottom of the lake that's so specific that so, that's the shit that you like you <laughs> see like a like that movie woman in the water or something yeah. you're like no. this is <laughs> what my mom warned the me about yeah. oh my god it's real oh, i know man. i'm trying to think if there was anything my parents told me growing up i guess just that like jesus existed yeah. <laughs> religion <laughs> yeah. that i could be anything i wanted to be <laughs> yeah that all i had to do was try and then i have a fully supportive <laughs> system around me yeah uh, those are some of the oh, lies. No. Man, they are though. They really are. Um, Sorry. someone wants to know. Shell Nord says, "Please teach Grace how to be emo, <laughs> but in the most cringy way possible." Thanks. Uh, okay, uh, okay. You genuinely went through an emo phase. Yeah, yeah. You were like textbook. Yeah, emo. Yes, emotional. Mm-hmm. Person, yep. At some point in your life, do you think you're out of that phase? I think it's still deep down in there. Yeah, you, you can know? never fully be out of I it. I think it's just like, uh, you know, I'm like, uh, uh, what are those candy? I'm just got coatings over me. You know okay. what I mean? I'm like a jawbreaker. You know? <laughs> yeah, but the core is still the same. It's still a gummy bear. You know what I mean? How do you describe emo in your opinion? I'm gonna have to. Okay, I'm gonna have to do some like serious <laughs> sixteen year old soul searching. Mm-hmm. Really sick. Okay, you're talking to sixteen year old Mitchell now. Okay. Anything. What are, what are you into? I mean, my chemical romance to use. Like, what are you into? <laughs> How would you describe your aesthetic? I mean, I I like to wear black. I like uh, I like my chemical romance. Okay. I like to wear my chemical romance band like band t shirts. <laughs> I like I like tight jeans. I like jeans with holes in them. What I got bothers van- you? What What bothers you? I mean, when people interrupt me, that bothers me a little bit, but it doesn't matter. Sarcasm's funny. Uh, What bothers me is just like preppies, you Uh know, and also like when my CD player skips on the bus because we hit a bump or something. That sucks a lot. Um, Or like if like when my fringe gets in my eye, like not Uh when it's over my eye, but when it gets like actually pokes my eye. Yeah. That fucking sucks. Don't tell my mom I'm cussing, by the way. Uh, How, okay, is emo straight edge or not? Those no. two are not mutually exclusive. No, it's just a lot of people like to say they were, you know, like it's it's hardcore straight edge. Usually, is what they would say. They'd be like, "Yeah, I'm hardcore straight edge" or something like that. Hardcore straight, straight edge. Straight edge just means that you don't do any drugs, any any alcohols, any of that. Right. I mean, and emo means that you're emotional. That you maybe listen to music like My Chemical Romance, and you just <laughs> feel it. You know, like when he hits those notes in Ghost of You, you're like, "Yeah, Gerard, you're talking to me, and you're actually my dad, and we should be buddies, and you should <laughs> at reply me." I still tweet you to this day my dude (laughs) but emo it's a little bit of a misnomer because you're only one emotion you're only like sad or depressed that's what happiness is not and they see that this is an emotion but that's where they got emo wrong back in the day is Uh i i used to always criticize that and say yeah i am emo and and i'm i can also be happy about it because that is an emotion as well and uh yeah i'm the happiest emo you've ever seen (laughs) Look, that's the, a kid's book I would read. The happiest emo you've ever seen. <laughs> that's just my memoir. That's me. Oh, yeah. That's pretty great. Oh, yeah. That's me, though. What was when you were like in your full emo state? What Ooh, was your 19? 
<laughs> what was your plan for when you got dressed? Like, what is the look? Okay, top to bottom or bottom to top? I mean, it's your choice. Cool. We'll start it's an the- emo world. I'm just living in it. We'll start at the feet. Okay. So first off, we got ourselves so like some Adidas Sambas. You know what I'm talking oh, about? Oh, yep, yep. Or Or we have our van slip-ons oh, checkered. Vans. Don't be silly. Don't get the plain colored. <laughs> you want checkered. And then when you get older, you grow up into a plain colored pair. Yeah. And then you've got your pants that are so fucking tight that you're like, <laughs> everything is showing, but you know what? It doesn't matter because I'm not that hung. And so you just like wear some tight pants and they've got like holes in them and they're like a little faded and you just uh-huh. feel like a million bucks. And then you wear boxers from American Apparel <laughs> that you can definitely a see bunch up. Yeah, in the pants. <laughs> Then you're going to wear yourself, uh, it's going to look like a, it's going to look, it's going to be a belt, but it's going to look like a clip from like in a car, like a A seat belt. belt. Yeah, It's going to look like one of those belts and Uh it's not actually even going to be holding up your pants. It's just going to be in there. And then you're going to have a studded belt on top of that. Oh my God. Then you're going to have a shirt on that's one size too small with your favorite band or ironically your favorite band that's your favorite parents because that's cool too that was cool too okay and then you're gonna get a flat iron you're gonna straighten your hair and then you're gonna straighten your hair again because it wasn't right (laughs) uh you're gonna straighten and and when i say your hair i mean all of your hair your bangs the sides the the little bits that are Uh, i thought you were talking about your body hair your pubic (laughs) hair you're gonna you're gonna straighten everything out you gotta Um, really set aside a few hours in the start of the day to get this look yes yes Uh you're gonna need to have a fully charged digital camera for Uh the day for those selfies that you're gonna take oh yeah because you don't have a phone to do well, it for yet. your MySpace selfies. Oh, yeah, yeah it's course. just for when you're ready and for lunch when you don't eat in the lunchroom when you eat in the uh, computer lab <laughs> and you are there taking pictures with your girlfriend Allison. So it's it's just a really cool fun time. It's just a really casual look. Oh, oh, and you need a black hoodie that zips up mm. um, that has like a hood on it that's just too large, just a little too large that people be like, what the fuck is going on with that person? <laughs> and wear it as much as you can in class. Got it. Yeah. Um, oh, and hairspray. You need hairspray to keep all that hair in place. Because if you don't have hairspray, it's like, what are you even doing? This is a high maintenance look. Trust me, that's why I had to give it up. Yeah. It was too expensive. I couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> that lifestyle. You're basically like a Beverly Hills housewife at that point. Emo TM was expensive. And don't even don't even get me started on yeah, the, what's like, emo the liners. TM? trademark okay uh, i'm sorry <laughs> i just didn't know why it's after emo because they asked the oh same i thing. saw the tweet no yeah. i yeah like emo trademark like i've done it so much that it's just basically me oh okay wait yeah did you ever do guy liner we'll never know <laughs> There's no documented proof of it. Well, maybe. Maybe. Look, look, I had a MySpace for a long time, and I'm really glad that a lot of those pictures are not around anymore. Do you really think that they're not available? Let's not push it. Here. I mean, I'm just going to suggest if any of you guys got like a, a little bit of free time and want to do some deep diving and maybe unearth some of those old photos from Mitchell's MySpace. Please don't. I would not um, disapprove. Oh, I, would, I do strongly. I would not be disappointed in oh. whatever the findings might oh. unearth. I'm not going to lie to you, Grace. There is a picture of me dressed up as Gerard Way somewhere online. <laughs> And I, I got so much makeup on my face. And I even remember my family was like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, I'm just being expressive, okay? I'm being emotional. I'm in touch with my emotions. Now, I I'm going to go upstairs and listen to Under Oath and think about all my future tattoos. <laughs> now, if you guys don't leave me alone, I'm going to freak out and cry. Okay? And then no. it's going to be dashboard all night! Is, is there infighting in the emo community? Is there like a sense of judgment between fellow emos? Like if I saw another emo person? Yeah, and you were like... When I was in my emo face? No, that, no. Or it was, was it a sense of camaraderie? It was full family. It was like, oh, um, you're one of me. It's like juggalos. I, I mean... <laughs> Yes, exactly <laughs> like Juggalos. only slightly less makeup. Yeah, yeah. sometimes. Um, someone wants to know, what is a thing you do <laughs> often that is very, quote, your hometown? <laughs> what's, what's the most... Okay, I think my just my voice. <laughs> like, every time I go somewhere and there's like a local from LA, they're always like, I love that accent. And I'm like, what <laughs> accent are you fucking talking about? See, I've never noticed an accent because you're from Ohio, for yeah. people that don't know. And I don't know, other than Drew Carey, what is Ohio's, like, stereotype? Cows. That's it? <laughs> Did, like, country. Like, okay. Like, uh, 
tipping cows in mm -hmm. you know cornfields and just like just like straight up Midwest, just Midwest. You know, we're just right there, just you know, hanging but out. See, we're I've we're never... hanging out about Kentucky. You know, maybe go to the W. WV and fireworks. It's <laughs> fucking tight, you know. Go down to the bay. Get some... But is that how everyone sounds? Where you're from? Some people sound like this. It's, some people, it's like it's a little like because it's it... like, kind of like that. You okay. know, it's a little more <laughs> like this. You know, they're. It's almost like they're talking to themselves, like they're questioning the whole thing. Yeah, they always look like they just ate a lemon. Yeah, and then there's kind of this like mine where it's this like middle area and i can't yeah. i can't do the middle middle where it's like every once in a while they let it slip up where it's just like where i would be like y'all can come back uh -huh. where you'd be like what did you say y'all to me what yeah unironically you? yeah huh. i do i and i'll sometimes say y'all uh when i'm drunk and i'll be like ooh. <laughs> yeah and i always I associate y'all with a super southern that's, and not uh, Ohio. That's because I would assume that Ohio is more like Bobby's world. Like, don't you know? Oh no, 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 no. Okay, no. That's like that's a that's no. That's another world. That's a that's a no. That's <laughs> another world. That's we're Minnesota. Not, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Michigan. Yeah, we're more just like we're just, we want to be cool. We want to sound cool, and uh -huh. we you just can't. Oh, yeah. a person from Ohio just cannot sound cool. We have we don't have a a flow to our voices. Mm. Like even so, right now, like. If someone were to transcribe this, they'd be like, where's the punctuation? I don't know. Uh, and that's uh, what happens a lot when I get things transcribed. So what's the most <laughs> Ohio thing you do now? If there is something. Mm. I'm trying to think of myself for Jersey. I mm. feel like maybe dye my roots or let my roots go undyed for too long. Oh, also man. bagels. <laughs> yeah, I was going to bagels. I, I was going to maybe make my commitment to a good breakfast. If if someone's oh, is that like an Ohio thing, I mean, guys, I mean, if, it's the most important meal of the day there. There's a we got a lot of Cracker <laughs> Barrels and it's a big oh, yeah. deal. And uh, like if if any time I go home, I'm always like, here's my menu, Juanita. That's my grandma. I'm always like, uh, I'll have this in the morning on Monday and that on Tuesday and that on Wednesday and. Is it like I'm yeah it's like that just that food you know yeah. I feel like that's like the, the one thing the comfort that, food yeah okay. I miss a lot where I'm just like biscuits and gravy oh yeah hell smother yeah smother me in it hell yeah yeah um someone's to know uh one they think the title should be it's that time of the month with Mitchell Davis oh which I kind of like <laughs> you know we're testing these out and they want to know do we have any memorable St. Patrick's Day stories oh man St. Patrick because this will come out on April Fool's Day which I've uh, officially canceled this year. You've canceled it. I canceled it Personally. this year. I said this year we just all don't need it. You know? I mean, yeah. can we all come into agreement that it's just like, we've already had enough bullshit this year. We're good. With the way the world is working right now, I feel like we skip, should just stop. Just skip it. Maybe change it into a day where we're all like genuinely nice to each other with Oof. no ulterior motives. That'd be fun because then nobody would really be out. You know, you could yeah. really have the place to yourself. And if you did, <laughs> if you did. To yourself, <laughs> the earth. Yeah, you'd have like the, the whole, whole place. There's the whole place. You'd be like, hello, hello. All the uh, assholes are inside. Like, the damn it, of it's the purge. today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that actually sounds great. The opposite of the purge. Let's pitch that movie. Yeah. It's called The, the Nice Guys Out. <laughs> That. It will workshop the title a little bit offline. For sure, for <laughs> sure, yeah. I mean, uh... Nice guys day out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just people genuinely saying hi and helping each other without, like, needing any sort of compensation. No jokes at all. No, it's, it's just thing. people treating each other with respect. For two and a half hours. For two and a half hours. Starring The Rock. Starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Kevin Hart. Yeah, as the two <laughs> nicest guys out you'll ever ever meet um <laughs> do you have you ever done april fool's pranks um i i don't like pranks not that i can think of yeah i really hate april fools yeah I, i've always i've done the fake obvious easy low-hanging fruit go-to of a youtube video where i say i'm pregnant yeah, um, i've never even done anything like that the only youtube video i've ever put up about pranks is literally how to deal with people who are trying to prank you <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's a video of me telling you how to walk away from these people quickly. Oh, that's and it's a five second video of you just walking away. Actually, it's like it's pretty long because I give you different. I'm like, this is Tactics. the prank for this. This is the prank for that. If they're oh, trying to be great. like this, you just say this. That's great. Uh, I genuinely don't remember any of the words from the video. That's why I had to go like that. I, I don't. I it was during those. It was during like the times where it was like, got to make a video this week. Got to make yeah. a video this week. Going to make two videos this week. Fuck it. Four videos this week. I'm going to make eight videos this Ugh. week. How many days in the week are we? 
I'm going to start three more channels. Yeah. One for gaming, one for makeup, and one for my family blogging brand. <laughs> <laughs> That's literally how uh, it was. 2010. Though. Yeah, it was amazing. You it's are like not missed. <laughs> this is my channel where I just crack my knuckles. Um, I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> I remember um, one, my ex boyfriend one time. He's a comedy writer, and he came around when we. I think it was for Hannah's birthday. She would have. She started calling it like Hannah. What'd she call it? Like Hannah Day or something. And so she got all of us like a comped room at the W Hotel, and then she wanted to go to Jumbo's Clown Room. And I remember. Olga K came and Harley was there and it was like this first time that this guy that I was dating got to like meet my content creator friends and he told me the next day he's like yeah I was talking to Olga and I was like so you do YouTube but like tell me what that's like she goes I have eight channels I upload 28 videos a week and he was like oh uh, my god that, I was like she's not wrong she was doing that at that time which was commendable and also anxiety yeah inducing. that just makes me feel crazy insane i know that's he amazing was like, i'm impressed olga k i'm impressed oh god get those moosh walks man dang. um but yeah he told me that and i was like yeah i know that that sounds insane to you as someone that doesn't understand this world but that's very accurate as to what she does every week man yeah it really was it really was i mean um, it is i mean you know it's all just oh, jumbled together do you have any memor memorable St. Patrick's Day stories? You know, I have never been to Jumbo's Clown Room ever, You've never? ever, ever. It's like ever, a it's ever. a strip club. It's a strip club <laughs> club light. It's like um, it's more like uh, they all have shticks and gimmicks, and they don't get fully nude, and it's like dancers Just that like come me. out. Yeah, yeah, it's my speed for strip clubs because I've never been to an actual strip club before. Also, the first time we went. Greg from Dharma and Greg was just chilling by himself at the bar and tight. he seemed to know all the dancers on a personal level. That's it, was like, what? it was like a Saturday night and it was so crowded that you had to buy their merch so that they would let you in because there's a line out front. They cool. know what they're doing. Cool. And we all bought merch because it was, oh, Hanukkah. That's what she calls it, her birthday. There you go. Um, and so, or used to. This might have been the last Hanukkah because we all got a little too fun. Um, and I woke up up in the shower just eating <laughs> almonds i had taken the hotel room almonds and i didn't want to eat them publicly so i just sat in the shower eating almonds so shit face and then i fell asleep with my hand in the almonds and i woke up and i was like well this is horribly embarrassing <laughs> okay. it wasn't even my birthday all right <laughs> Uh, I like that you reach for almonds though. That's... I was like, I'm gonna be kind of healthy and like <laughs> take care of myself, but I'm also fucking shit house and hungry. <laughs> so I ate basically like an entire plastic carton of almonds in the, in the shower, just on the floor, That's just fully so makeup smeared and everything, as if I just gotten broken up with her for no reason. Um, but it was very fun. That wasn't even St. Patrick's Day. Oh, the worst St. Patrick's Day situation I had uh, was that same guy that was dating. His friends lived in Denver and we went to visit them in their new place that they were living. Denver, altitude, insane. Mm -hmm. And it was also St. Patrick's Day. So we started drinking green beer like first thing in the morning. Wolf. All the way to the night where I remember they, we saw a river dance, Irish dancers at one of the bars. And I was just rooting them on so hard, like to the point that you would think that they were all my little sisters. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but the, the reality is that I'm just like a 25 year old woman screaming at them from the side, <laughs> sloshing a green beer around me like, you're doing it. <laughs> OK, uh, that that was what I was going to say is I, I've never had a St. Patrick's Day kind of thing. But no, we, we have it, the college town that I grew up in. We have Green Beer Day. Oh, really? And, and that's not that's different than yeah, St. Patrick's. It day? was a different day. Okay. And on that day, I I the some I man, I don't remember those days. That was the only time I've ever had green beer, um, and I, I that I can remember. But it's the only time I've ever blacked out. It. I don't know what it is about a cartoonishly colored beer that makes you think this has no effect on me. I, I can drink 20 billion of these. I know what it was for me. What? The moment it changed my t my tongue color and okay. I looked in the mirror, <laughs> I was like, oh, we're having fun. <laughs> I look like a sorority girl. <laughs> I'm, man, I woke I woke up uh -huh. and uh, I didn't, I this it was not sexual or anything. I just woke up in someone's dorm room. I didn't even go to that school. <laughs> 
Uh, you just you found a bed for yourself. Yeah, yeah, and I and I and then the next day it was like sprinkling rain, just me like stained green around my mouth, uh, and I just walked home in the rain. And my roommate Kyle was just like, "Dude, where the fuck have you been?" And I was like, "I don't know, dude. I don't even know I how it you. happened and what uh, happened." It was yeah, no. That's we drank green beer all day long, and then we went back to their apartment place that they're living and. The friend was like a really, he was really into like cocktails and like excited about like gin cocktails and making stuff. And we were going back and this was like, you know, cut to 12 hours later, stumbling back to their place and him being like, what do you guys want to drink? I'll make us some like cool cocktails. And I just said, gin in a cup. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I ordered from him. And then the altitude <laughs> fucked me so hard that the next day I literally just laid face down on their living room floor for the entire day. I was like, I feel like death you like needed to actual, be close to the earth i was like <laughs> i can't if i stand up everything spins i have to i live on the floor now Oof. literally welcome not to my the, life <laughs> welcome to my, that's the callback we've been oh, waiting for we got there it only took 107 episodes we got there um, boop, boop, um boop, boop. we're gonna get more into these questions we're gonna take another quick break but when we get back more with mitchell davis out of the floor on not too deep not not not, 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 not too deep. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by Brewmate for insulated coolers for slim and craft cans to canteens that keep a full bottle of wine at a perfect temperature for over 24 hours. Brewmate ensures that every sip of your favorite adult beverage is just as refreshing as the first, no matter where life takes you. And with over 30 color options, including matte, glossy, and glitter finishes. There's something to match your drink of choice, not to mention all Brewmate products are glass-free, zone-friendly, and don't require any ice. You simply pour it in, put it in your bag, and go wherever you'd like. No more half-drunk beers, diluted cocktails, or wasted bottles of wine. And guys, okay, I gotta admit, you know me, I'm a little bit of a lush, just a bit. So this is a perfect mashup to be sponsoring this podcast. I I went on, the Brewmate offered me some products. I went on and I got their holographic, holographic, God, I think I've indulged in my Brewmate flask before I recorded this ad read. Uh, the holographic glitter spirit flask in stainless steel. It's, okay, I used to think flasks were dumb. Uh-uh, this one's perfect. It's got, it's like slate so it's like kind of adult and mature and masculine but it's also holo hol hol i can't even say it. holographic so it's pretty when the light hits it it also has this like bedazzled top to it and i for sure used it when i was down at south by southwest in um the recent weeks and it was amazing i it, it was great i loved it it kept my vodka cold and it kept my um suspicions minimal <laughs> so right now brewmate is giving our listeners a special discount of 15 percent off your first order when you go to www.brewmate.com b-r-u-m-a-t-e.com and use our code grace that's 15 percent off when you use our code grace at brewmate.com don't let summer heat ruin your drink go to brewmate.com beat the summer heat this summer, get 15% off your first order by using code GRACE at B-R-U-M-A-T-E dot com. Code GRACE. We're back. We're back. With more of your questions for Mitch. Uh, save us. us, Davis. Save us, Davis. Um, the same person, the Rye Guy 915, wants to know, what advice would you give to someone who is normally the wingman or wing person for others, but has a hard time dating on their own? Uh, I, that's me. I don't know. I, I, that's, I need that. I don't know. I I think I, you have to find by default a a good wingman for yourself. I'm a good wingman for people. That's right. that. But I I I don't know. I have no idea. I'm nervous. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, Rye Guy. You've asked too many questions already. One one per person. We can't be giving Rye Guy too many questions. All I right. Guess. Well, if any of you have any specific <laughs> answers for Mitchell now, no, 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 no. Just arrify me. <laughs> Um, I think yeah, I think the biggest thing is you have to find someone that becomes your wingman. Yeah, yeah, and like builds you up. You need a hype man. I think it's also good if it's like a yin yang situation. You yep. can kind of go back and forth and be oh, like, yeah. "I got you this time." If it's like, "Hey, I'm gonna help you," right? Look take shifts. Cool. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Turn it into a, a work environment. <laughs> Actually, start a career. Yeah. Maybe get a job. Just get uh. a job. That's the answer. 
<laughs> okay, Rain Tranquility gave us some rant topics. Rain Tranquility gave us things to rant about? Yeah. How, I love a, that. Yeah, what a weird juxtaposition. <laughs> uh, rant topics, pet peeves. Pet peeves. What's your biggest pet peeve? Oh, eating in silence. I hate <laughs> I hate hearing someone eating and it's just you, dead silence. You, <laughs> Explain this. Like I hate when someone's like, "Here's your food." Like they like will be I'll, like a just dinner at like someone's house or something, and they all put the food down and shit, and then everyone just starts eating. And it's just the sound of just like oh that silverware. SNL sketch sketch where it's just literally silverware, and then like one sentence gets said, and then the, everyone goes back to like like even the moments like when I'm in Chipotle and the music is cutting to another song and it takes just a little <laughs> too long. I'm like, everyone stop eating. <laughs> Everyone acknowledge this moment of silence. They haven't started playing the next <laughs> song, and I can hear all you smacking your mouths. <laughs> I fucking hate it. Even yeah, even this morning, I was eating a granola bar, and I was like, because I was listening to the uh-huh. rain, because I'm that guy. You're that guy, emo. And and, uh, and the rain stopped, and it got silent enough for a second that I heard myself eating the granola. And, and you made like, yourself mad. I was like, Ugh, I've got to <laughs> turn on music. I'm so disgusting. Mm-hmm. Literally, that's what I did. I mean, I... It's just, oh, oh, it's the you. worst. It's the fucking worst. Why would you even bring this up? Who brought this up? Rain Tranquility brought <laughs> it up. What's your pet peeve? Um, well, I get that um, because when I got a Sonos system, I play music in my house like all day long, like as background stuff if I'm not watching TV. And so I'm so used to having background noise or having like white noise in some way that if I get into an Uber, if I go over to someone's house or something and there's no sound in the background not even just like a fan or something yeah i literally am just like i can hear too much yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it gets claustrophobic it's yeah. really i yeah. don't know i i there's something about it uh it just really gives me the fucking it ha- like on on airplanes it happens to me a lot sometimes when they're yeah. handing out snacks and shit and there's like no sound whatsoever yep. and all i can hear is the people eating i'm just like we gotta wrap this up okay <laughs> I get that it's great, and you guys brought this on the plane yourselves, but you gotta wrap it up. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. Um, I think my pet peeve one is just people being mean to other people. That's general, vague. That's but not, okay. That's specific, mine too. I guess. Yeah. Sure. I don't know who enjoys that. Don't be a that. dick. <laughs> uh, people that don't use their turn signals. Ooh. I have been getting real pissed about this lately. Okay. And I don't under. It's the only way our cars communicate with each other. Why are you not utilizing communication? You know. I think about the the lack of communication between cars all the time. Because it's like I have no other way to tell you what I'm about to do in this death machine on wheels that I'm operating. That is why I I cannot wait. And I find it so goddamn important Mm. that we need to start like implementing more electronics and not like check out this display or this. it's just like right. these cars need to be able to communicate via Bluetooth like how close they are and yeah this kind of like I, they need proxies and I just yeah because I got a, a <sighs> Wrangler now I upgraded from I got uh, a Wrangler I got a Jeep Wrangler I had a Mini Cooper so I went from driving a go-kart to like a big yeah. doofy golf cart situation you, you, yeah you literally just it's the same car but just like more it, got, it hulked out yeah. basically it, just it's like I'm angry <laughs> But it has the beeping sensory system that when I get too close to cars on either side, if I'm trying to change lanes, it lets me know. Super thankful. Yeah. It screams at me a little bit. It chirps at me and tells me, no, no, not yet. I Look, I remember the first time I ever got into a car that uh, that started beeping uh-huh. and dinging when you didn't buckle your seatbelt. And I was like, okay, clear. Okay, yeah. cool. Cars can go in the right direction. I've just been waiting for the day that I can have an Uber that's just like self-driving and it's all just like Bluetooth, you oh, talking to each other. Be Mel's, Mel's shaking her head like, I don't want that, but I want I that. Trust so, it. I want that so terribly. Please. <laughs> okay. Car gods. Car gods. <laughs> um, yeah, I think lately my biggest pet peeve is no turn signals. I just get so mad, especially because they're literally, it's, it's just so easy. pushing a little little click. Honestly, little click. I I turn mine on all the time on accident. I turn it on when I'm going straight. I like to freak everyone out the opposite way. You know what? When I was, when I was okay, this is so fucking stupid. When okay. I was younger, I used to do this thing 
where I would turn the hazards on when no one was paying attention and see how long it took someone who to see how long whoever was driving to t- would realize that their hazards have been on mm-hmm. the whole time. Yeah, and I genuinely thought it was fucking hilarious. I did uh, it for years. Wow. Because uh, my car, my old car that uh, I used to share with a few people just had like a big hazard button right yeah. in the middle. That's what they usually do. And so I would just like <laughs> I would just, like someone would be making a turn or like a I don't know they would just be like pulled in somewhere and I would just like just slow slowly <laughs> tap it really quiet and and so until yeah like in, in between songs you'd hear like a oh yeah and yeah. then someone would be like what the fuck mitchell i used to do the same thing with nickelback anytime i would be playing on the radio and i found a nickelback <laughs> song face, it's like how that's literally it says if you said that you abused an animal <laughs> but, <laughs> but so because i would like be on radio duty while the person's driving uh, and so if i'd find a nickelback song i would i would just be really quiet and just slow like every few minutes just like as the song's going just turning it up until no. the person's like what are you doing? Come on, Mitchell. <laughs> Honestly, I, I was playing too many April Fool's jokes in cars, I think. Yeah, you were a total prankster. <laughs> I mean, that's my other pet peeve is when people leave their turn signals on by accident. I know that that's not Sometimes a it's not thing. by accident. Sometimes Mitchell's in the car. Sometimes Mitchell's just driving in an Uber. Just being a little silly guy. Um, well, I, should, I should start doing it in Uber. See how quick my rating goes down. <laughs> Have you seen that on the Uber app that you can read people's reviews of the Uber driver? Like, no, but that's <laughs> yeah, you can so fucking it's, crazy. It's so nuts. I was in Chicago. I gotta my be brothers. careful what I'm writing now. I didn't know it was a thing. My brother called an Uber for all of us, and he goes, "Uh oh!" And we were like, "What?" <laughs> and we're all drunk, and he just goes, "Uh oh!" Someone commented on this driver, and just goes, "They're a talker." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh no!" So we all got into the car in like dead silence, being like, "Here we go." Oh, like I didn't talk at all the yeah, entire of course, drive because he saw that one time and went well now I can never fucking talk well, again that's what I secretly want to do because it's not a mean thing you're not in saying anything totally negative you're just like inferring that this might be uncomfortable if you don't like talkers and that's now what I want to leave as a comment on all Uber drivers might be a talker <laughs> this guy's a real talker we got a chatterbox on our hands <laughs> over here yeah. uh, five star he- ride five star conversation yeah big human radio <laughs> We got a radio DJ driving the <laughs> Nissan, whatever. Just make right it now. really detailed. No aux cord needed. Yeah. Um, okay. The Rain Tranquility also wants us to rant on the reality of being a YouTuber. I want you to go first on this one. Um, the reality is I don't consider myself a YouTuber right now. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> me neither. Like YouTube is a platform that I use, but the the word I, YouTuber, I does it exist anymore? I don't know. Is it's, it still a thing? I, I mean, heard. Um, I know TikTokers are a thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, t- we're all Kesha-ing right now. We're all TikToking right yeah. now. I mean, that TikTok you don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> I I I hope that I hope that somebody goes. Wow, we really should get Kesha on the platform. <laughs> <laughs> Like they hear this and it's just like a marketing guy and he's like, shit, why haven't we done this? Fuck, yeah, dang. She's been brushing her teeth with a bottle of Jack for days. We're going to see. Um, <laughs> I think, uh, I heard Hank Green say something that like really affected me, like hit a chord. <laughs> he said something, I forget where it was at, where it's basically the same type of question. Like what advice would you give for someone starting YouTube? And he was like, my advice is null and void now. Like the way that I started on YouTube has no relevance to the way people are starting now. So my advice is not helpful. Yeah. that You know what? That's- and I was like, that's great. Instead of like bullshitting some, you know, thing mm-hmm. about transparency and authenticity and like consistency, you're just like, No, I can't actually give you advice because I don't know how the fuck to do it now. Yeah, I mean, those are the rules, you know, 10 years ago, five years ago. And it's it's a totally different ecosystem now. Nobody. It's less a community and more a business. Oh, for sure. I mean, and that's what happens with any company or organization that's trying to grow. And it it is Google. You have to understand that it's it's Google with a a fun little filter that's called YouTube. Uh, But it is just Google. It's it's algorithms and shit like that. And, And and now that they have like kind of know what it is and are trying to harness bits of it yeah Yeah. it's a lot more isolating and it's a lot more like you're saying not community based but more like it's a brand i'm working on a brand it's a lot more structured in terms of like there is an actual playbook yes of how to do it now yes like i used to make the joke that there is no rule book for us and now actual tangible rule book yes there is now and there's like videos weird and people teaching you how to do it better and stuff yeah and oddly my like 
I don't know. I, I don't want to be controlled by the man personality in my brain. It's like rebelling against that being like, sure, you got a rule book, but yeah, right. I don't need to follow those rule books. But then I'm like, why are my numbers bad? And I'm like, oh, because you're not going by the rules. Yeah, <laughs> but the rule book is is uh, it's really it's really intimidating. Yeah. Uh, whereas it didn't used to be like that. Like when you were uploading something, you were just praised for making something. Yeah. As where now it's just you. It's very active that that was bad. That yeah. was not a good thing that you uploaded. <laughs> <laughs> and we don't like that. And here's exactly how you can change so that you're good again. Yes. <laughs> and it's like, you're like, oh, and I thought you're my biggest per- viewer. I don't know. This is crazy. And I thought that you liked me for me. Yeah. And it's, that's like a thing now. A, a lot, there's a lot more of like, we better get what we paid for, you know, that yeah. kind of vibe I feel. And, uh, yeah. And it, it's a, it's a bummer because it does obviously give people, uh, pathways to create content more mm-hmm. so than ever but at the same time i feel like it makes everyone cookie cutter versions of everyone else that authenticity has gone away because everyone's going by these quote rules rather than being like themselves yeah i, w- I honestly i i would say that if you're trying to be a quote youtuber right now you're mm-hmm. doing something wrong yeah uh that's that's not like a that's you, th- that should just be a branch to the root of whatever something is that you're yeah, doing. Yeah, and it feels a little passe not to be an old crotchety dumbass right now, but like, I, no, you're it right, feels though. like a couple years ago, the idea of being a YouTuber was a genuine possibility that could happen for people and people like the Liza Koshis of the world like re- sought it out and mm-hmm. did it. Yes. And now that doesn't work anymore. Yeah, no. I mean, it's like someone being like, waking up tomorrow being like hey i'm gonna be a vine star yeah yeah you know what i mean it's TikTok. like I get, I get that vine's not around anymore but technically it is because it's on twitter and it's all owned again oh, yeah. like i said faces of faces boys yeah so it's just like <laughs> but no i'm serious it's just like these they're just the same things and it's uh, i don't know yeah <sighs> it's really hard to I, I I just wouldn't want to put myself in such a it's such a small box now. It is. And YouTuber used to be really vast, and now it's just like oh you so you do that. And now <laughs> there's um there's jokes about that industry, which means to me it's an old industry now. If people like there's that new movie coming out called The Other Two, I think it's called with the siblings whose like younger brother becomes like a Justin Bieber like sensation, and wow. it's like them that are. T- it's it's a- is it the show? Yeah, it's from the writers of SNL. I think did it. It looks really fucking funny. Yeah, I, I think I auditioned for it, which is a bummer. But uh, it's yeah, and then it's like the two older siblings are like hot messes in their own regard, and so it's like them going to Hollywood with their little brother. But like that's funny. And there's a scene that I saw Tyler post where it's like the older brother at a party talking to people, being like, "What do you guys do?" And they're like, "Oh, we're influencers. We're like gay influencers." He's like, "What does that mean?" Like, we make content. He's like, "What?" He's like, I, I do like lifestyle. Um, he does like religion. He does this. And it's so stupid, but it is. That's how it is now. Yes. That I'm like, oh, man, this sucks. <laughs> like, yeah. If it's now able to be parodied like that, uh, it's. Uh, it definitely means that it's old. It's old. Yeah, it's definitely gone through some phases if we What's can make fun next? of it. What's next? What's next? TikTok. Is that what we have to look forward to? Give me a rock. I'm taking myself out now. Uh, I don't know what's next. I I mean, I, I and I think that's like the beauty of the internet mm-hmm. is that we don't know what's next because if we all did like it would already be fucking ruined <laughs> no, <laughs> like be, people would already be like i'm gonna go there now yeah um, but that's how youtube was was like this thing that was i felt like a little private little space that a bunch of us got to like hang out in and go "Ooh, here's our like little oasis that no one really knows about and the people that don't really know it are judging it but they don't know how fun it is and now it's just like yeah someone opened up all the doors and like all of society just shitting all over it. yeah yeah i mean i definitely think the next thing it's 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 gonna be about going back to that uh community vibe yeah where it's, i think it's gonna cycle back where it's almost uh um, fingers crossed where yeah where it's almost kind of like the way people are using patreons and like yes these kind of sites where it's just like i'm actually just gonna make the content for the few people that enjoy it yeah and, i'm gonna and i'm fulfilled with that and i'm not gonna look at numbers or anything yeah i agree i think it really because i know that's more towards where my brain leans now it's like the being able to do the podcasts and like speak directly to an audience without trying to be this like broad mm, 
sort of appeasing situation instead doing it for myself and the people that truly like are engaged with Mm -hmm. it and care about it is way more fulfilling to me than being like i just want to pass three million subscribers or whatever yeah yeah and and it's also it's just it's it's it has more last it has more longevity if it's not some pop culture reference that in two months the video is unwatchable because nobody it doesn't make any sense totally totally. and i feel like a lot of stuff on youtube now is is that it's very timely things are very like it's it's it makes sense today and then tomorrow it's like it's either old news or it actually doesn't make any sense anymore what's the momo challenge what's that uh, is that scary? Is it a scary face? Something it's with like a scary, a scary face? face? Okay. That's, I don't know. I mean, this won't even be relevant at sure, all by the time this comes I'm, out. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure I saw on Twitter Shane Dawson said it's not actually happening. Right. And I look, he's. And when the, he decrees something, that's what, yeah, the world follows. <laughs> it's not actually happening. So yeah. there you go. I think, yeah, he like put it out there this, or Phil DeFranco also. I don't he put, know. He put something interesting though. He, I think Phil DeFranco, I'm pretty sure this is what he tweeted. He tweeted a video talking about how like the Momo challenge. It shouldn't be like it's harmful for kids or whatever. I don't know what the context of this challenge is. Me neither. All I know is it's a scary little face thing. Yeah. So he posted this video being like, this is why the Momo challenge is like bad or wrong. It's a no-no challenge. It's a no-no challenge. And then YouTube um, promoted his video being like, thank you, Phil, for like uncovering this. But then they also demonetized his video of him (laughs) telling people the reality of this challenge. And so welcome to YouTube. He posted a screenshot of YouTube retweeting his video and then the screenshot of him not being monetized. And he goes like a story in two still frames. I mean, that is such a, that is, oh, that's Uh, beautiful. I I know. That should be published as a two page book. Yeah. That would be beautiful. <laughs> Man, that's funny. It's very funny. And also like, oh, dang, that's sad. Yeah, I got that's a copyright weird. strike on Party Music 2 a couple days ago. Party Music 2? Yeah, that's 10 years old. <laughs> I, yeah, I finally got the email that said uh, you have been demonetized for 100 words to call your vagina. I saw this on Twitter and I was, oh, man, that was great. I and some I think someone at replied to me was like, you got to frame this. And I was like, yeah, yeah. put that in your bathroom. That's I know. funny. It's very, I just, a random email came up and I was like, really? It's taking you guys this long? That's to get oh, to this one. <laughs> seriously, it was. I was. The, oh, there's still. I got the. I have a hole in my sock, and life is over. Uh oh. Well, Man, thank these... God we've almost gotten to the end of the podcast. And I was going to say the last little thing that Rain Tranquility wanted us to rant about hmm. was um, holes in the sock. The expectation society has for people who are in their late twenties, early thirties, and the expectation is that we're all perfect and have our shit together. But clearly, Holy Sock McGee is living proof that. Um, we're all relatable. Millennials are running around like chickens with their heads <laughs> cut off, and then Gen Z is watching it all burn, okay? Gen Z is actually going, y'all a little extra. Yeah. We'll figure this out. <laughs> we'll clean up whatever fucking mess you guys have started making because you got all excited about being content creators. <laughs> Gen Z's like, we'll make change. You guys just keep taking your fucking selfies <laughs> and your fit tea and promote that. We're going to work on some gun lobby laws real quick. BRB. We're actually writing things. Do you know what writing <laughs> is? Have you ever read a book? Yeah, we, uh, we're we using our platform for social change, um, not just social media. Uh, oh, but God. good luck with that audible brand deal that yeah. you have floating around. Really loved that Baby Shark song. It was really cool. Cool. Thanks so much for that. It really is something we love playing while we're all reading and studying. You guys while are really the future. we're protesting in the streets for actual health care reform. Yeah, okay. Good luck with oh. your mommy blogging. <laughs> Too oh, real. That is funny, though. On that note, Mitchell, thank you for joining us for the first formal monthly episode of To Be Determined Name podcast featuring Mitchell we gave, Davis. Yeah, we gave them plenty of options. Keep tweeting at us options that you think um, would be helpful for these episodes yeah. to delineate them. And also, um, you know, we're going to continue to figure out like the exact format for this. This one's a little loosey-goosey. Yeah, they might just want us to rant. They might just want us to do yeah. Q- Q&Os. You don't know. They might just want us to be cute. Yeah, I mean, I'm just sitting here just be like... <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh, he has been watching anime. Okay. Me. <laughs> I don't like this. This is like some weird, terrible nails on the chalkboard ASMR like, for oh, me. Oh, I'm sorry. Should it be like this? <laughs> no, no. Momo, no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's everyone's new safe word. Uh, where can people find you online if they don't already know, Mitchell? Uh, LiveLoveLive.tv and CDEmoji.com. And yeah. just at Mitchell Davis, two M's, two 
L's, two S's. You got it. On all social media platforms. It's, it's just everywhere. We'll see you guys next time in another episode of Not Too Deep. Thank you, Mitchell. Goodbye. Too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Not too deep. It was Grace Helbig. Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated, producer and edited by Melissa D. Mons, writing by Diane Kang, production assistance by Katrina Henning, post-production sound by Christopher Bell, and an extra special thanks to Flula for the theme music. 